Okay, I have to begin by thanking Dr. Mike Leliniak for putting together this entire series of talks in this TEDx uh, series and for putting this uh, as the first event to usher in our week-long student research uh, celebration. So I don't think many people appreciate all the efforts that he puts into promotion of research. I'd like to thank all the previous speakers for their wonderful thought-provoking talks, and I'd like to thank all of you for either coming to or sticking around for the last talk. I didn't ask to be the last one, but I think it's okay, because what I'm going to do is take a number of different threads from all those talks and try to tie a bow on this all afternoon. And what I'd like to do is tell you a story about an all-male college and what it means. So, I want to begin with a question, a very simple and basic and obvious question. Why, why in the world is Hamden Sydney a college for men? And of course that leads to a host of other questions. What does it mean to be a men's college? What is the role of a college for men? Is there a role for a college for men in 2019? How has that role changed over time? What did it mean back with the founding of Hamden Sydney? What might it mean in the future? So let's begin with just the basics of college in the United States. There are about 5,000 four-year colleges and universities in the United States right now. And of those, only two are colleges for men that don't have a female counterpart, just and in Sydney and Wabash in Indiana. And that's leaving out a few schools for professional religious vocations. Most of those are Orthodox Jewish rabbinical schools. But really, and in Sydney just about stands alone. Why? Why is that? Well, to answer that question, we need to look at the axis of time. Of those many schools, there are very few that are older than Hamden Sydney. In fact, so few we could count them on two hands. Because of course, when Hamden Sydney was founded, the United States didn't even exist. Virginia was still a British colony. And back then, we had a different term for all male education. We called it education. <laughs> there was no option for higher education for women. It really wasn't until 1834, when a small college in Ohio, Oberlin College went co-ed that there was first an option there, and around that same time, the first few colleges for women began. Things didn't really change much for about 35 years. In 1869, a couple of other schools went co-ed. A few more women's colleges opened up. But I don't think we appreciate today the fact that in the 19th century, and for much of the 20th century, it was just a single career pathway for women in higher education, and that was solely education. And most women's colleges and programs at coeducational schools for women were simply for education. It was that way for most of the 20th century. Things didn't really change, and most uh, all men's colleges didn't go co-ed until finally around 50 years ago, around 1970. So one of the most famous alumni of Hamden City, President William Henry Harrison, said, Times change, we change with them. Well, Hamden Sydney has changed a lot. We no longer have Saturday classes. We no longer have compulsory Bible sessions. A lot of things have changed here. And yet, one thing about Hamden Sydney has not changed. We are still a college for men. Again, why is that? Why have we not changed in that way? Well, to answer that, I would like you to think about what it is that makes Hamden Sydney special. If you're like me, you could probably come up with a long list of things that make this college a very special place. But what about our all maleness? Should that be near the top of the list? Is that a defining feature? Is that an essential feature, as we heard from Professor Irons, or is that more of an accidental feature? Is that an essential ingredient that we need to bake the cake? Or is that just a very visible candle that we stick on the outside? And even if it is a secondary feature, I hasten to add that just because something is secondary doesn't mean it's not important. But let's try to answer, answer that question by looking through the eyes of two men. First of all, a young man who's still in high school, who's looking for a college or university. And second, a man who's been at Hamden, Sydney for at least a couple of years. He's now a self-identified Hamden, Sydney man. 
or even perhaps an alumnus who's graduated from Hamden City maybe six weeks ago, maybe six decades ago. I venture that those men who have been here or have gone here are going to say that the all maleness is an important part. And we'll come back to that in a moment. But let's first return to that high school student. What would he say? Well, I'm not a betting man, but I think it's a pretty safe bet that that young man is looking at lots of special features about Hamden Sydney that don't focus mainly on the all maleness. I think you've probably heard that many young men come here not because Hamden Sydney is all male, but in spite of it. So again, that raises the question, why then are we all male? What is the importance of that? So I have thought about this question a lot, and I've got some answers to give to you. But before I get to those good so-called answers, I'd like to give you a few of what I consider to be bad answers for remaining all male. And by that, I mean answers that are not positive, that promote men, but rather either a little bit misguided or way off base, things that define us negatively in terms of who we exclude. So let's begin with that. And first of all, I would say this notion that Hamden Sydney is a place where women are unwelcome, where women are guests, that this is some sort of he-men, woman-haters club, with apologies to Spanky and Alfalfa from the old R gang time. This is, this is no such place where women are unwelcome. Women are certainly very welcome here in a number of different settings. And it's also not the case that women are considered unworthy here because women uh, are an essential part of the experience here, not just as party or social playthings, and not even the women who work here in a subservient role, but as we've heard before, women occupy and have for some time and will continue to many of the important positions of power here. They are deans, they are directors and department heads, chairs of committees and programs. They do many of the important things here. Women have been in the classroom, and in fact, some of our valedictorians have been women. So it's also not the case that women are unworthy. And finally, let me make it clear, if you didn't know already, that men are now the minority in colleges in America. Nearly 50% of college students are now women. So I think our students know this, and I think they realize that we are not preparing students for 1775, for the 18th century. I think our students now know that women make up 48% of the workforce and growing, 14% uh, of the active military and 23% of military reserves. Our students know that they will be working with, and in many cases, for women. So along with those negative answers, let me give you a couple of others that I don't really put much stock in. The fourth one that I list here, this notion of different learning styles between men and women. The evidence for that is, is quite questionable, and I think it's abundantly clear that all of the things we tout for men's education, the small group discussions with lots of uh, close attention, even the, the playful competition and the real world experience, all the evidence suggests that that works well for women too. And then finally, the notion that having the opposite sex or the opposite gender is a distraction. I don't think that holds much water either, because I think it's virtually impossible for young women, women or men to avoid the distraction of hormones. And I would venture that many of our men would enjoy having that distraction around. So I don't think that's absolutely right. So what instead would I consider as a positive reason for being all men? Well, I would like to argue, in maybe a twisted way, that being all male enables our men to have the opportunity of really thinking about what it means to be a man and to occupy many roles and to see things in the true liberal arts tradition from multiple perspectives. So let me give you a few examples of what I mean by that. First of all, as we've just heard, there are some traditional roles for men and for women, but a lot of the things that both traditionally and currently that women do, these are roles that have to be occupied by men here. All of the fine and performing arts, all of the music and visual arts, all of the writing, all of the poetry and essays and short stories and journalism. Increasingly, 
Women in co-ed high schools and universities are taking on the leadership positions, the government, the student court. All of that has to be done by men here. There's no way that they can shirk that. Secondly, uh, and bearing in mind what we just heard from Dalton Hall, I would argue that an essential aspect of Hamden Sydney is the close-knit brotherhood, the camaraderie. I can tell you, because I've observed it, that many of our men have very deep and meaningful relationships with other men. And that's something that is really to be treasured, because I think that's something that is very rare in society today. I don't believe that all the conversations that men have are just about sports and video games and zombies and things like that. I know it's true that two men can go out fishing for an afternoon and say 10 words and come back and think, oh yeah, that was a great discussion. But I have seen men reveal themselves to other men here. And I know that that is a really rare thing because I know that a lot of men, when they do get emotional, it's to other women. That's how they often open up. But here, they do open up to other men. They form not only lasting, but very deep friendships. And that's something to be treasured. And then finally, the third important thing I would argue is that this is a place where our students are forced to confront what it means to be a man. And the thing that I love about Hamden City is that we don't necessarily give an answer to that, but we ask men to contemplate that question. And I like the fact that of a thousand different students here, they might come up with a thousand different answers for that. And of the thousands of alums we have, uh, maybe many more. So uh, reflecting upon what it means to be a man. Well, this is something that is and has been part of the essence of Hamden Sydney, which is why on our gates, it, it warns men coming in here that they should leave as men. So what does that mean? Well, let me close with this. Uh, this is just one man's uh, interpretation of that. But I would argue that back when Hamden Sydney was founded in the 18th century, uh, what it meant to be a man was very different. Because what it meant then was to be a provider, to share of your power. And that's because what we would now call a man's world was back then called the world, because men held all the reins of power. It sounds very patriarchal and paternalistic today, but in fact, uh, men really had all of the power, and fortunately, we should all feel fortunate, that that has changed. And what I think being a man means today is it still involves power, but now you are empowering others to find their voice, so that people of every gender, of every age, of every shape and size can become the person that they were meant to be and to become a good, true, contributing citizen. That's something that has been there in Hamden City from the beginning, and that's something that is still around. So let me close with a quotation from one of the namesakes of Hamden Sydney. That's Algernon Sydney on the right, with John Hamden on the left. And he wrote and thought a lot about government and power, but he also spoke about being a man and those places where men are formed. And he said, many things are unknown to the wisest, and the best men can never wholly divest themselves of passions and affections. Nothing can or ought to be permanent but that which is perfect. So let me leave you with this question. Is Hamden Sydney perfect? I would argue no, and I hope you would agree. <laughs> because there's nothing on this earth. No man, no woman, no institution, no creation of man, including college, is perfect. I think the closest we come to perfection is in our ideals. And if it's true that things change with time, as William Henry Harrison reminded us, that I think it's our ideals that we should try the most to keep permanent. And I think there are far, uh, there are few ideas which uh, are more deserving of permanence and which come closer to perfection than Hamden Sidney's ideal of forming good citizens. So I hope that's something that we can keep around for a long time.